Facebook's acquisition of WhatsApp has a lot of people talking, and it's a great $19 billion rags to riches stories. One of WhatsApp creators couldn't get hired by Facebook or Twitter. The other is a Ukrainian immigrant who came here at 16 and lived on food stamps, but still refuses to sell out to advertisers, comparing those sellers who stalk you online to the big Ukrainian big brother government back home. So was their secret to make, what is their secret to making it big in business? And is it a model that others should follow? Our next guests are both experts in the startup world, but have very different personas when it comes to viewing the tech glass half full or half empty. We're excited to have joining us for the first time, Glenn Hellman. He and I tangled long ago in the Washington Business Journal, and I quickly learned that Hellman is known in this town as Mr. Cranky, or as the Business Journal dubbed him, DC's tech DC Tech's chief agitator, but I also quickly learned he's a very smart angel investor with a lot to teach the rest of us. Ready to take on Mr. Cranky is one of our regulars, Jonathan Aberman, also well known for being one of the best and brightest in the startup world. He's been dubbed by the Washington Business Journal, one of the Power 100, and to great fanfare, he just launched his latest venture, Tandem NSI, a new way to connect local entrepreneurs to national security agencies. Gentlemen, welcome to you both, and Jonathan, congratulations on that great launch. But let's talk the news of the week. Mm -hmm. What's up with WhatsApp? I'm going to start with um, my beloved Mr. Cranky, Glenn. Uh, I'm sure you have um, some thoughts on a $19 billion purchase. Well, you know, it, it's a great American story because you see a Ukrainian in immigrant now worth yeah. an estimated $6.7 billion, and he was on food stamps. Uh, you got to shake your head because it's $42 per user, the acquisition cost. Users that, if they stay a year, will pay 99 cents per year. That's and no lot. advertising. That's a lot of payback time. A lot of payback, but Jonathan, I'd make the argument that uh, the per user is based on 350 million users and growing. Right. They're in places Facebook isn't in, like China. Of mm -hmm. course, now they may get kicked out now mm -hmm. that they're part of Facebook. But if you look at per user costs, Facebook paid more for Instagram than they're paying for WhatsApp. Well, good idea, bad idea? Yes, yeah, good idea. Uh, you have to understand the context. One of the context is that we're out in the middle of a big food fight between Google and Facebook and Apple and Amazon about who's going to control the Internet and who's going to control who we ultimately follow. Ultimately, there's an economic model around this, but at the moment, it's just getting users. And this company, WhatsApp, is a great example of how companies get bought and not sold. Google wanted to buy it too, but they sold to Facebook because that's where they wanted to be. It's a great thing for Facebook. It's a great thing. I think it may pay off, but we'll let the stockholders decide. And so far, the market seems to like it. Well, stay tuned for more talk with these two tech geniuses. We're going to talk about other things. So what does work and what doesn't work if you have a great idea for a startup? We're here with two of the best, Glenn Hellman and Jonathan Epperman. Glenn, uh, there's a lot of startups, uh, well, let's not even say a lot of startups. There are startups that are wildly successful that we do hear about. Twitter, Instagram, others that we've already talked about. There are startups that are wildly successful that we never hear about. And then there's the largest category, startups that are massive fails. How do you make sure you're not in that latter category? And talk about some who are in that middle category that we never hear about. So, you know, if you look at the WhatsApp uh, situation. These guys ran in stealth. They went about building a business in a cave. People didn't even know they were in Mountain View, California. Right. They, they, they didn't seek money. Money sought them. And really great entrepreneurs work in a cave, in a small team. They don't go out and beat their chests and uh, promote themselves. They promote their company when it's time. So I'd also say that a lot of the people who make a lot of noise are failed fail because they make a lot of noise instead of really? making a lot of, instead you of doing think, a lot of doing. You don't think the loudest horn gets the marketing advantage? Well, there's a company in this town that makes a lot of noise, but the problem is their customers are not in this town. They make a lot of noise in the DC tech scene, but your customers are national and they're Fortune 500s. Who and are we nobody talking about here? You know, uh, I, I wouldn't want to speak about them, but I just did. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, you know, and to their credit, they have a good product, but they started r ramping up their PR engine in this town before their product was ready. And because of that, many of the people who used them early failed. Come on, Nini, are you talking living so I'm talking speak. You're talking speak, okay. So, uh, Jonathan, a little spat, smack talk on speak. And do you want to defend them, or do you want to head on to uh, other examples of uh, I'm not gonna, I, work? I, 
think it's a great company, and, and uh, I think there are a lot of companies in here that do a lot of promo. I think what we have here is a generational difference to a certain extent. I think the millennials and Gen Ys have grown up in the world of digital, and, and to promote oneself avidly is as natural behavior as it would be for uh, baby boomers to uh, sit down and watch television. It's just, it's just the way that they're wired. And entrepreneurship, tech entrepreneurship, is driven by, uh, a lot of the uh, companies driven by that demographic. So PR, that's just the way it is. But the truth of the matter is, is that businesses, as I said in the early segment, businesses don't get sold, they get bought. And what I mean by that is that the best entrepreneurs are the people who focus every day on loving their customer and focus every day on how do I create a business model to love my customer. But how do you get those customers if you're not loudly tooting your own horn? Well, you, I'm not, and I'm not saying you don't have, there is a role for brand and PR in every business. What Glenn is getting at, I think, is that some people mistake PR for building an experience that's supported by a brand. In other words, the brand is the word we use as a shorthand, like Washington Business Report. You know the value that comes with watching the show. Brands are important, but you have to have the thing behind it that ultimately the customers will value. So, Glenn, you say don't get out of the gate till you're ready. Let me pose the example of a friend of mine who has a brilliant idea. She's got the app ready. She's uh, building the business. Um, and it's going to be a tricky thing as to when she launches because it's not going to be perfect. But if she waits, other people could get the idea or she'll never be able to improve what she has. Well, first of all, th th there's a lot of entrepreneurs who worry about other people getting the ideas first. Your idea is not what sells. That's You've got exactly to build a right. company. Execution. It's not the idea, it's execution. And it doesn't matter who has your idea. There are There's very few companies that are based on real secret sauce. In fact, you right. all point to the fact that Facebook is not the, the first one out of the gate. But yeah. we got to wrap on that. You know, we love you both, and we want to have you both back on. So thanks for joining us this Thank week you. on Washington Business Report. And stay tuned. Call me